Um, I'm Gordon, I'm the editor of IQ magazine. Um, me and Dougie met about, I think it was three or four years ago, I can't tell with COVID. Um, you on? Hello. There you go. Better. I think it's a little bit longer actually. But we, we met at PIN conference and then... 2018? Maybe, yeah. Probably like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is stage four of our very slow world tour. We've been to London, Prague. We've been hampered by the pandemic. Yeah. And uh, so. we have a tradition of gin and tonics. So. Okay, so please don't mind us drinking on stage. Cheers. Slant. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Oh, so let's start. Let's start from the start. Let's start with your career in music, quickly, because we only have 45 minutes. So um, let's start with your career that, in music. That, and that's we'll... not enough for the first stage then. Well, you know. All right, okay. Uh, if I just can say that, that it's, a, it's a great privilege to be part of the first edition of um, Pristina Music Conference. Mm, well done. And uh, well done to Kushtrim and the team. It's, it's a great... Uh, project and we need you know more and more of these projects so so we can uh, invite first and foremost all of our, our friends from all around the world uh, to come and visit Pristina to come and visit us to, to, to see um, Login said last night for example it's not a like a really sexy city but he's making a great mistake in there because we have like the best people around us uh, the youth is wonderful we have like really creative people around us and then ambitious and then they really want to do things around here. So we should respect that and we should value a lot what, what these guys are trying to do. So we need all, us, all of us collectively, I think we need to work more and more into promoting Pristina mm -hmm. and promoting our country. And um, one of these projects is something that uh, does just that. So congratulations guys and thank you for the invitation. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Your career in music, how did it start? Well, where did it start? Was it here well, or was course, it in London? No, of course, of course, it started in Pristina. Pristina used to be a hub for, for rock music. Um, we used to have, I, I mentioned it quite a lot, you know, in every, in, uh, uh, every neighborhood, in every garage, I think we had like a couple of bands um, playing and rehearsing and recording and we had a really booming kind of um, stage of rock music in, in Pristina and that's how I started as well. I recorded my first song when I was like 16 years old. And um, yeah, and then re-recorded that later on just for, for, for fun. Um, yeah, the, the, my first band was, was called Horizonte. Um, this was like 1980s, very early 1980s. And um, as I said, we had like one recording song the reason why it was just one because we had to wait in a queue with other bands to because there was only one recording studio and that was uh, in um, uh, radio uh, center in Pristina and uh, you know you, you just had to wait your queue and uh, you, you could record one song and then maybe six months later or seven months later you could have an opportunity to record another one mm -hmm. But uh, as I said at that time, you know, it, it was like a really cultural thing, you know, to have a band and to, to, to be in a band. And there were, there were quite a few um, events that were organized then, you know, like Boom Festival. I, I think the mayor remembers that. I don't know about you guys. So Boom Festival was in Pristina and um, all, like, like the biggest bands from ex-Yugoslavia used to play once a year. So we got the chance to mingle with, with really good play uh, because Yugoslavia was at that time, uh, you know, it was like in power with, with a lot of uh, UK bands, for example. Mm -hmm. We had bands from, from Bosnia that um, recorded at the same studios as, as Rolling Stones, you know, and one of the, the guys that, that uh, uh, did that, for example, lives today in Pristina, Sheki Hoja, the bass player. Unfortunately, I don't see him here today. Um, so, you know, it was, it was a, like a really, really nice hub for, for, for rock music. And um, later on in 92, we went to, to, to London. Uh, it wasn't just me, it was a lot of our generation 
you know, that we used to play music together or separately in different bands. And uh, that's how we decided to create the other band called Oda. Mm -hmm. um, recorded an album in a bedroom. And, uh, you know, we just, we just did that one as a, as a, as a collaborative of, of five different guys from different bands. And, uh, you know, it, it resulted in that, in that album that uh, we privately kind of supported and, and, and um, you know, invested in. And uh, before we knew it, it became this kind of sought after record that we didn't even really know. And we didn't really understand the recording uh, music correctly. We didn't understand the distribution. We didn't understand uh, promotion of it, etc. So we, we were basically winging it big time. Mm -hmm. So um, that, was, that was probably one of the uh, learning curves for myself when it comes to, 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 to the music industry. Uh, for example, me and Anessa, we were living in a very tiny flat in, in, in Swiss Cottage, and um, we, I ordered a thousand copies of CDs to be made. So, you know, in your, in your mind, it's like a thousand copies, fair enough, it's good. And then one day they arrived, it was like the box was just a little bit smaller than our flat. So, <laughs> you know, and um, we started to play and uh, those thousand CDs really went quickly. So I ordered another thousand and, you know, people from around Europe, they started to call like, can we order some and can we do this? So I became a promoter, I became a distributor. I became the record label, I became, you know, but everything like happened by, on a needs basis rather than thinking about music industry and then music industry in Albanian language, which is very important to, to, um, uh, to talk about because we are quite hampered as a, as a collective. If we play music in Albanian language, we are mm -hmm. quite handicapped uh, uh, as far as the world music is concerned. Uh, our language is very unique. And, um, you know, we do not get to, to, you know, if you don't, I mean, I guess in, in every language that's a problem. Uh, if you don't sing in English, then, uh, you know, your, your demography stays within the, 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 the language that you, that you uh, speak in or sing in. So, yeah, but um, anyway, we ended up, you know, selling about 20,000 copies, which was like a big thing. Mm. And... Um, Mind you, this is time of no internet. This is time of no Spotify, no Apple Music. This is time of, uh, you know, no YouTube. So basically we've sold 20,000 copies based on, you know, people liking the album and liking the songs. And uh, we still to this day, we don't have a video. But you're, but you're on Spotify now, which I told you about yesterday. Thank you so much. Yeah. I don't know who did that, but... You're still getting ripped off by someone. I, again. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, ripping off continues because on, on the second album, for example, we, that, that we did in Pristina, um, this guy came in and said, like, okay, you know, I'm going to do the, the distributing for you in, in, in Germany and this and that. And uh, that happened. And, you know, the situation in, in Pristina and in Kosovo in general started to deteriorate, you know, and... Uh, you know, we left and we never saw a dime of it, mm. but we, well, I don't have a, a, a copy of that CD anyway. If anybody does, good, yeah, good, please. Chris, good Christmas present. Please bro. send it to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So your experiences, let's get around to Dura. Your experiences, good and bad, obviously play into when, when did it become obvious that Dura was going to have a career in music? As a, it's, it's, it's kind of a hard question to, to uh, you know, to answer, like to pinpoint the moment and when and how and, but as a parent, I think, you know, uh, you kind of get the messages from your kids and, you know, like, like what they want to do, how they want to live their life, as well as, you know, um, they are the byproduct of, you know, the, the, their parents, you mm -hmm. know. 
So whatever they are in contact with, they will kind of follow or they will get the, 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 the work ethic or they will get the, the, some sort of a direction in life, how they want to, you know, go about it, you know, in, 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 in the future. So Dua was very young. She was like 13 and 14 when she started performing and um, she, she went to, to Sylvia Young's uh, theater, drama and theater uh, school in London. Mm -hmm. So um, because of me and Anessa being alone in, in, in London, for example, or, or here as well, because we have very small families, um, we were kind of together constantly. So when I was playing music, I was in the background. And uh, you know now we have changed the... the, the uh, position she's performing I'm in the background so yeah. that's that that worked okay um, so she was very young when she when, when she started all of that and one day you know 15, she was like 15 years old or, or something like that um, she just says like okay I, I want to do music you know like I really want to do music you know I want to this I want this to be my profession we were living in Pristina at the time and um, it was quite a brave move from from our side to 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 let do a go in you know on her own actually not completely on her own because it was like we were changing you know uh, Anessa would go there for two weeks and would come back and I would go there for two weeks and I could come back but again there would be like partial times when she would be alone mm -hmm. in London as a 15 16 years old girl and uh, but she was very mature and she still is very mature for her age which, which gave us a lot of confidence in, uh, you know, uh, letting her be in, in, in there on her own. And as I said, you know, we, we spend a lot of time together, so we have this connection, which is like more of a friendly connection rather than, than father and daughter or mother and daughter. So, you know, it was the confidence that she gave us that she's going to be a good girl while she is alone in, in London, you know, it's, a, it's a quite um, an important thing. And you have quite a lot of spies in London anyway, because there's so many Kosovo and Albanian people. Of course. People. <laughs> yeah. Everybody would send reports and photos yeah. and then, yeah. Um, so how instrumental were you in helping Dua build her kind of core team around her? Because that's really important. To, as far as I'm aware, she's stuck by everybody. They're still there from the beginning, yeah? Yeah, it's... it's um, uh, Okay, maybe I should I should just um, tell you a story about, you know, how how our first kind of connection with, with with people from management and, and things like that happened. Um, she was 16 years old. Um, as I said, she was going to to Sylvia Young uh, Drama and Theatre School. Who in inside the the the, um, the school there is a, an agency called Spotlight that provide you know, like like um, talent for for commercials. Mm -hmm. So she went there. She did the audition for the, the X Factor commercial, and it was like two ca casting agencies. One was for for the look, basically, and the other one because there was singing involved. There was another one for for singing. So she passes like first and second and third and fourth and whatever audition. And uh, the casting agency, you know, says like, oh, we like the girl number two, which was Dua, for example. I don't know what number <laughs> was it. You know, I'm just winging it. You know, and, uh, but at the same time, they had to record the song with, uh, I'm not going to name the, the, the producer, which is like a very big producer in UK, you know, Grammy winning producer. And um, uh, ITV have contracted him to, to do the, the recording. So all three or four girls that, that you know, young girls that were, were, were recording uh, went to, to the studio with him and then he says like, oh, I like this girl, you know. And the two casting directors said like, oh, funny enough, this is the same girl. Mm -hmm. And that's when, you know, okay, the, the commercial happened and um, this pretty big famous uh, producer uh, says to do like, okay, you know, uh, I would like to sign you. She's 16, mind you. And um, Dua says, okay, fine, you know, I'm, I'm very happy. She's 16, she's over the moon. And uh, she says, like, okay, but you have to speak to my dad. Okay, and uh, where's your dad? He's, uh, in Kosovo. Mm, okay. 
fine. <laughs> you know, it's going to be an easy sell. So um, um, we arranged, uh, uh, at the time, there was no Zoom as well. <laughs> there was a Skype meeting. Um, we get this, this, uh, this call, okay, you know, famous producer. I'm kind of, you know, very like, oh my God, is this like really happening? And, um, and then we get the, the, the offer, which was like really, can I say shit? No? Yes, you can. Okay. So it wasn't, it, it wasn't really good, yeah. let's put it that way. And, um, you know, I said, I thank you. A uh, long story short, uh, by the time we en engaged the lawyers, this and that. So by, I, I completely refused the, the, the offer from this major producer. And um, Dua goes, like, she's very upset, like, oh my God, what my, you know, what, what did you do? Why this and that? I said, okay, fine, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get through this because it's not something that you want to do. Hmm. You cannot just sign anything that, that comes in front of you. Um, and um, the lawyer that we, we got, he's, uh, uh, his name is Lawrence Ab Abrahams. He's a very good friend of ours now. And, um, you know, and he said, like, okay, I, I, you know, he was calming Dua down and I said, like, okay, you know, I think your dad did a very good job. That's why, I've, you know, I'm going to try and, and, and uh, introduce you to, to, to somebody else. And again, long story short, in comes um, uh, Ben Morrison and uh, uh, tap management. And Dua says, like, yeah, okay, but again, you have to speak to my dad. So we all go to London, we meet, and uh, we just went, went on very well. And um, probably it's, it's one of the very, very, maybe a unique cases in music industry when um, the management um, agrees not to sign a management contract yeah, until real. there's a, a record label uh, record contract. Yeah, very. So which, it, it is very weird, and then uh, I, I I said to him like, okay, fine, I like you, everything is great, you know. But first things first, you prove yourself that you can do things, then we can do, you know, something else. And uh, this is the beginning, and this is like like um, um, we when I when I talk when we generally talk about luck in uh, music industry, like you need to be lucky. I think the only luck that exists in, in these circumstances is when, you, when your paths are crossed with good people. Mm -hmm. That is the only luck that, that, that you need. Otherwise, everything, is, everything else is hard work. You have to be like, like a, a true soldier. You have to be like, you know, you, you cannot just think that, that, okay, things are okay, come, going to come your way without doing anything because you signed a record label. You know, sorry, you, you signed a record deal. Um, so, having good people around, which we luckily do, and we are, you know, we have our first day people still with us, yeah. eight and a half years, nine years now, together, that says a lot about them, and I hope that it says a lot about us. I mean, you mentioned hard work there. The, the one thing about Dua is, she's undoubtedly- Can we have a sip? Yeah, you can, right, of course. Right. Right. She's undoubtedly the hardest working person I know in the business. In fact, the f I, I met her about a year before I met you. I was giving her an award at the European Festival Awards for Groningen, yeah. breakthrough artist or newcomer or something like that. And then all the festivals I spoke to in the room basically said, oh yeah, she played our festival this year. And I was like, she can't have played all of them. Oh yeah, she played all of them. That's why we voted for her for this. So given that and given her hard work, her ethic, uh, have you been surprised by the level of success she's had? When, when we work in, in, in the, uh, the projects, just, just like everything else, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of live in a bubble. You don't really understand the, the, the magnitude or the impact or the numbers or, you know, everything that's happening while you're working on the project or something that's being developed, you know, for the future while the things that you did before, you know, they're performing. So, um, but sometimes you just step out of it and, you know, when you, when you get like saying like, oh shit, you know, the, the, the highest streaming female artist in history, mm. you know, that, that term history just gets you. 
and say like, okay, you know, is this, sometimes you need to pinch yourself, sometimes you, you, you kind of are proud of, of, of the, her achievements and, you know, but as I said, she's a really, really hard worker. She's probably, as, you know, I, I, I would say like, like, you know, if we compare um, musicians, you know, I, I think that in UK at least, you know, because I don't know the, 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 what's, what's going on in the other parts of the world, I would think that, that Dua and Ed Sheeran probably are the, the, the hardest working, you know, musicians in the industry. Yeah, but he takes a year off, so I'm not having that. <laughs> Let's just stick with you. Okay. When, so when did the idea of Sunny Hill Festival and the foundation first get talked about? And who, who initiated that? Was that your idea? Or was it Dua's idea? Or was it over dinner? What happened? Yeah. Um, when, Dua, uh, when, when Dua released her first song, and, um, you know, our first fan base was Kosovo, mm -hmm. you know, and then later on Albania, and then Co Kosovo Albanians in, in Switzerland and Germany and all over the world. So our first fan base was like Albanian speaking, you know, uh, or, or Albanians around the world, uh, because we are a very small country, but as I said in the beginning, we have abundance of talent and everybody is proud of everybody, you know. And uh, whatever one of our guys, you know, achieves something in, in the world, that means a lot for us. So we had the, the, the probably, probably, um, I, I kind of forgot the, 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 the percentages that we took later on, uh, you know, from researches and stuff. But um, probably we had, if not 80% of the, the fan base was, was created on a first song from Albanian speaking, uh, folk or, or Albanian heritage, you know, around the world. And um, in 2016, um, we wanted to say thank you to that fan base. And uh, because we knew what was coming at 2017 and what's coming on 2018, that it's going to be impossible to do something that we wanted to say thank you, mm -hmm. you know, because it was like, the, her life was pre-planned and is still pre-planned about two or three years ahead. Yeah. Um, I knew that we are not going to be able to do anything on 2017 or, or 18. So we said, okay, let's organize two concerts, one in Pristina, one in Tirana, you know, one day after another, and, uh, you know, to say thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, when we did that, you know, we... we um, it was a very hard thing to do because it was like two production at the same time, one in Pristina, one in Tirana. You had to be torn between two, you know, and then, and then you have like uh, some sort of a standard to, to achieve. So you don't want to go backwards and say like, sure. because now, now we have like major uh, record label executives. We have, you know, friends of ours who work in, in, in the, the booking agents, you know, like WME, David Levy was here, for example, for the first time that he ever been to, to Southeast Europe. Mm. Probably, you know, it was like Kosovo and it's like this huge, big executive from, from you know, that every festival would, or, or gig would love to have him. You know, we, we, we had him over here and, you know, Phil Christie that time or, or, or um, Joe Kentish as, as one of the top ANRs in, in the world, now president of Warners, um, you know, they were all here. So it was a big kind of responsibility for, for, for me to deliver. Uh, so we did all of these. It was very hard to organize two productions at the same time. Anyway, um, we got about 100,000 euros, you know, in, um, uh, as a, as a uh, fund out of these. So um, we wanted to give it to, to, to the charity. And uh, we gave 100,000 euros to, to, to different, uh, to alternative uh, festivals. We gave it to different NGOs. And now I'm probably, I, I, can't, I can't name them all, but it was like from uh, Dam Festival to, to Down Syndrome, uh, you know, and, and, and a lot of them, we, we just gave that money away and it felt really, really good. Mm. It felt really like, okay, this is what we want to do. This is what we want to continue doing. So we set up the, the, the foundation 
Sunny Hill Foundation was set up in 2016, basically, as soon as we decided that, okay, this is what we want to do, or how, when we realized how to do it, because the money was there, like, what the hell are we going to do now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 2017 didn't happen as a, as a festival, because we, we went back and said, okay, we're going to do the, 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 the foundation first, and the festival wasn't like, like the thing that we set, you know, but it's, it's a long dream of mine, you know, having something like that in, in, in Pristina mm -hmm. and having something in, 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 in Kosovo. And it's, um, it's one of the tools that, that we, can, we can use to promote, as I said, our youth, to promote our people, to promote our country, to promote our hospitality, to promote our, our you know, things that we do here. So um, we decided to, 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 to create a foundation and every year we're going to do the same and every, everything that, that um, you know, we get from the festival, it goes to the foundation and uh, with that hopefully we are going to be able to, to create, so sorry, to, to, because I, I, I kind of uh, derailed from the original question. It's okay. Um, yeah, so, so the idea came after the, that, that thing in 2016 and I said, like, okay, we want to have like a festival but we want to have a major festival mm. in Kosovo. It's not going to be just any festival. It's going to be like... Mm. It's, it's damn <laughs> impressive. I mean, I was, I was going to... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I speak to festival organizers all around the world, and they, and they know I'm friends with Diggy, and they're like, how the hell does he get these people? So how the hell do you get these people? Then I'm just a good guy, man. It's all right. <laughs> you can fool some of the people some of the time. <laughs> but seriously, I mean, you, no, you, you I mean, have a lineup yeah. which is the envy of the world, really. I mean, um, as, as far as a lineup is concerned, we are probably the best festival there is in, 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 in uh, Southeast Europe. Mm. If you take away Hungary with Ziget Festival, uh, which is a 25 year old uh, festival, and they have like huge budgets, yeah. you know, from all over the world. Um, I think that we are lineup wise. I think that, that we do attract some of the, the best or biggest names in uh, modern music today. Um, Ziggit, Zig though, if I can interrupt you there, Ziggit is a very good example because 80% of the people that go to Ziggit Festival are not from Hungary. Is, is that kind of one of your ambitions that maybe Sunny Hill will, will turn into that and get people coming we, to visit Kosovo? Okay, I, I know that you are quite familiar with, with, with our situation and then, you know, but maybe I should, should um, kind of emphasize this as well. We have a great big number of uh, diaspora, mm -hmm. especially in Germany and Switzerland. Yeah. And then we have like Finland and Norway and UK and Italy and, you know, uh, Scandinavian countries predominantly as well, you know. And, um, but it's like a third generation of, of uh, Albanians now living in, in, in these countries. So their friends are not just, they, they do not, uh, they are not just friendly with, with, within their own community, you know, so they go to school with Swiss and German and Finnish and, and Swedish people, mm -hmm. etc. You know, so they get to, to invite these friends to Kosovo. And in our last edition, we had 45% of foreign nationals. Okay. Now, combination of Albanian heritage as well as their friends, but we do have 45% of uh, internationals visiting uh, uh, Sunny Hill Festival. What wow. was I talking about? You interrupting me. <laughs> the lineup. Sorry. Okay, the lineup. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, the position where I'm in, you know, of course, always having in mind that that you know, with with heavy work by Dua. I mean, we get, or I get to sit down with some of the. Um, big names of mu music industry. Mm -hmm. And when you have that kind of chance and sitting down and explaining like who we are, where we come from, um, you know, why do we do this? Why is the festival, why does the festival exist? You know, the, 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 the situation where Pristina used to be and where we are right now and then, you know, what not. Then it's, it's, it's an easier understanding rather than just sending an email to a booking agent and saying like, oh, I would like to book Kelvin Harris. Mm. If you send that kind of email, they say, like, okay, where are you from? Say, like, Kosovo. Hmm. 
uh, how many people are going to be at the you know, festival or something. And they would say, like, okay, you know, 20,000. And I say, okay, 20,000 times 200 euros, you know, is this much. Hmm. We want 90% of that, hmm. you know. First, we don't sell tickets for 200, 000, for 200 euros. We sell tickets for an average of 60 euros for three days, mm -hmm. which is completely out of, you yeah. know, there is no other festival that charges that. So, you know, if you do that, you know, in a, in a normal kind of way of approaching the artist, you know, then you will never be able to, to, to get, you know, things done. Mm. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from or how much money you have because it's always going to be more money that you already have. You know, it's not, it's not feasible, full stop. So we have this chance and um, it's my duty or our duty, you know, to, to, to sit down with these people, to chase these people. I travel around the world to, to go to, to different um, meetings and different uh, promotions and things like that so I can sit down with them and explain this and kind of um, tell them that, that you, know, you need to come to, 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 uh, to Pristina because we have this kind of youth. The, uh, they, they are like really cool. Um, the energy that, that, that is at Sunny Hill Festival is unparalleled to other festivals. I mean, I go to, as you do, to a lot of festivals. People go there for, for, to have like three or four days of really you know, chilling, a little music, a little this, a little that. In here, it's 99% music everybody is in there for for you know they're really enjoying the, the 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 shows so that reflects on the artist as well sure and now we have the the the, um, the referrals as well saying like okay you know uh we had calvin harris you can talk to my you, you know to, to mark gillespie you know he will vouch for for what i'm telling you or you have martin garrick so you have to or you have miley cyrus or you have action bronson or you have sg lewis or medusa or you know a lot of artists that 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 can vouch for us yeah you know as a festival and and as well we we really one thing that i do promise and we delivered so far you know i say like okay we do not have the exact money that you that you usually charge but what we really, you know, do at the festival, we provide 100% of any rider that you provide, mm. plus any 10%, you know, that, that you might not want, yeah. but it's going to be there. So the shows, whatever they say, the, you know, it's going to be there. So, I mean, we try to, 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 to do our job in promoting, first and foremost, our, our, our city, because this is my my place, this is where I grew up, this is where, you know, I work, this is where my family is, this is where my, you know, everything is connected to Pristina. And um, I know this is your first time here, but I know it's not going to be your last time here. No, it's and, it won't uh, be. Especially, you know, summertime when, when, when city get, get really energized and then, you know, you, you have like different things happening. Uh, hospitality is out of this world, man. It's... Um, you know, it's just, you cannot explain it. It's just something that Pristina has. It has a soul. It has um, uh, something that is very organic. People are very friendly. You know, you, you met, starting from cab drivers. Yeah. You know, all the way to... to, to, to but can I just say, yesterday you said to me, no, take, take a cab to the office. I don't have to take a cab. I'm not like you. If you walk down the street with him... There's like 3,000 people come to say hello. So you take a cab around the corner. I walk. Nobody knows me. It's uh, fine. You say that, but, uh, you know, I think while, while we are very, I think that, that as, as, as Pristina Lee goes, you know, we are, we are very kind of, we are not impressed easily. You're very so friendly. I, <laughs> I'll give you that. I think if Michael Jackson would, uh, would walk, down the road, everybody would like, oh, it's him. Okay, so what we, <laughs> you know, nobody really gets hardly impressed. So thank you for saying that. But um, yeah, going back to, 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 to the Sunny Hill and the lineup, I think that we are in a position to do that for our country. Mm -hmm. We are in a position to do that with our, for, for our city. And um, I think that, um, you know, in past two years we had 
my partner Alban probably would know the, 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 the numbers much better than me, but uh, I think we have over 200, uh, 200 um, international um, um, publications, mm -hmm. starting with New York Times front page on, on art section, which you don't get. No. No other festival gets New York Times front page. How does it happen? I, you know, um, we are just, you know, we are a story of the Balkans. And now we have to, to, to shape that story into a success story. Mm -hmm. We have to tell the Balkans that, you know, the, the world, that, that this place where we come from, it looks like this. It does not look like whatever, whoever wanted to paint the picture of us. Well, that, that, so, that takes me quite nicely into you are speaking to the Atlantic Council, for instance. Yeah. So that's taking it to a whole different level. How did that come about? And I mean, how does it fit into our schedule as, as well, like you say? Because like you say, that people have their every day mapped out for three years. How does that get squeezed in? Did COVID help with that? No. Um, this conversation was going on for past three years. Okay. Uh, the reason why we didn't do it I don't know, should I say, oh, is this being filmed? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been live streamed, yes. Right. Um, listen, I, I have to say this. Uh, I read it somewhere. It says, like, um, you don't like to, 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 to uh, you don't have to like your government to like your country. Yeah. I'm from the UK, so yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> hi, Boris, how are you doing? Yeah. Anyway, so, um, you know, but sometimes when you, when you are into this kind of position where, where you hold some kind of weight mm -hmm. into promoting the country, then, you know, whoever represents the country, you promoting them at the same time. So it wasn't a good time three years ago mm -hmm. to do anything you know, that, you know, you would be rubbing shoulders with. Sure. Because I, I don't think that, that um, you know, it was a great time for, for, for Kosovo government, you know, how they handle things around here. Um, again, you don't have to like the government to like your country, but mm -hmm. you have to wait sometimes, you know, for a better moment to do something like we did at, at the Atlantic Council. Sure. I'm not saying that the, the, the current government is going to be like, oh my God, crazy, whatever. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a new government. We have to see what's happening there. Um, but as far as the president goes, I think that, that she's a great representative of the people of Kosovo. She's very, very well spoken. She's very eloquent. She's very, you know, likable. And uh, I think that three years later on, you know, we, every year is, is the, the repeated invitation, sure. you know, from, um, from Damien, who, who used to be a CEO of Atlantic Council Foundation, uh, you know, and I always say, okay, sorry, Damien, we have to wait, we have to wait, we have to wait, you know, and in the end, you know, we got this um, uh, change and I said, okay, we would like to, to, to um, accept the invitation and the, the, the award, but there's a condition that you need to, to, to invite President of Kosovo, you know, to address the, the you know, not just, just to be a guest and have dinner, but to sure. address the, the, you know. So this is the, the, the weight that I think that we should use into promoting our country, to promoting our values, to promoting our youth, to promote our you know, politicians as well. Mm -hmm. We need to promote our good side of, of people. It doesn't really matter where you come from, who you are. You know, um, the, the main point of this, what I'm trying to make is that, uh, you know, we work without an agenda. We just work for the, the benefit of the country. Okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're fast running out of time. Um, 
What, what's COVID done to the, um, your ambitions for the foundation and for the festival? Uh, I don't want to sound negative, but uh, you know, it's, it's something that the whole planet is, is, is being faced with. And uh, the problems that, that we are facing, it's, you know, it's something, something that, that um, every country in the world is being faced with. Unfortunately, while Germany, for example, pays to every festival, to every foundation, to every uh, organization, they pay 90% of their expenses, including artist fees, which I found out in, in, in Barcelona that I was like a couple of days ago in uh, a uh, European festival conference mm -hmm. um, uh, in Barcelona, I found out that Germany pays like paid 90% of every expense to the festivals, including if they paid anything to the artists up front, yeah. which you do Obviously. every time 100%, they pay 90% back, you know, so it's, it's, it's mind blowing. And that's even if the festival didn't take part. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, but we are not in that position. As I said, you know, our friendly, you know, um, report that I have with, with um, from the booking agents to the managers, to the artists themselves, you know, fine, okay, we paid what we paid, now we're waiting until whatever. So our lineup is ready for 2022. Okay. Everything is ready, so it's, 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 it's happening. Um, uh, so, but it, on, on the other side, you know, while we, we, we had to wait for, for the Sunny Hill Festival and the Sunny Hill Foundation, which we, again, I don't want to sound negative, but we didn't have to, to, to wait and stand still. But unfortunately, the, the, the local government was not, uh, how, how shall I say? Uh, Supportive? I think they were, they were like kind of, I don't know what were they, they're thinking. Anyway, um, we could have done, because we are changing the site mm -hmm. on 2022. And uh, it's a massive place where we are going to create a park for the city yeah, that is going to be, be used by the citizens. You know? And then when the festival time come comes in, it's going to be used for the festival. So everything is going to be kind of prepared as a festival site, but during you know, the rest of the year is going to be used by the citizen. Mm -hmm. for free so what we're trying to do is just give something back to the city sure and uh, i think that the local government did not really understand that and um, you know we waited for two years nearly for that request to be granted if we had the the, the grant like two years ago during the pandemic as you know everything stopped apart from construction so we could have planted trees we could have you know, done the, the, the staging areas, we could do like everything, you know, in two years, slowly, comfortably, rather than now in January, for example, because we need uh, the, the new assembly, we have the new mayor here today. Thank you so much for coming and congratulations on the new, new role. You have a great job, you know, and very responsible. And I know that, that um, you come from, from a place uh, that knows how culture works and uh, how important it is, you know, culture and sport is, is something that not only in Kosovo, but everywhere in the world, they are the ambassadors of the country, first and foremost. And I think that, you know, Pristina and Kosovo have documented so far that, that sports and culture is something that we have to very heavily rely on. So, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. well, first, I would like to thank you on behalf of Pristina for promoting the country, uh, Dugi and Dua and Anesa, obviously, you know, we are all very proud of you. And, uh, and obviously the local government now that I will take over from next Tuesday um, we will be your um, very close partners in developing Sunny Hill further because it is absolutely necessary and it's part of our agenda. Pristina of experiences, we've called it, that um, you know, takes into account um, the uh, very idea of uh, promoting Pristina globally 
through festivals and, and Sunny Hill, obviously. We are lucky to have you. We are lucky to have Sunny Hill and we'll obviously be you know, your partner in, in developing it further and uh, making Pristina known and creating Sunny Hill the best festival in the world, maybe beating the 85% of, of uh, Budapest. Yeah. So thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That's, that's good to hear because politicians don't usually understand the power that music can give as well. You know, in the UK, it's been ridiculous. The music's been way down at the bottom of the, of the pile when it comes to COVID support and all that kind of stuff. So that's lovely to hear. Well, I mean, um, in UK, we maybe we, sh we, we shouldn't derive a lot from, from, the, the, you know, uh, from, from our chat. But I think it's about um, 2.8 billion lost in... Um, you know, uh, music venues mm -hmm. that they lost just on the on the on the first two quarters uh, during the pandemic. So that you know, in London only. Yeah. Sorry. So that's a, that's a huge number for 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 the economy. It drives you a know, lot of drives a lot, lot, lot of money. Of, yeah. You know, it's 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 crazy. So um, yeah, I mean, as a festival, we we not just we we don't just bring the 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 PR and the the. Um, you know the 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 face of 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 Pristina youth, and then you know people who visit uh, you know Pristina, they get to know the mentality, and they get to know the the um, you know this part of the world that they don't really visit, because as I said, you know there is not there's no buying power. The promoters kind of skip Kosovo altogether. When that when I say Kosovo, you always can read Pristina because this is the capital city. This is the heart of of Kosovo. You know, and and everything that happens. Culturally, it happens here. So when I say Kosovo, I mean Pristina. So it, it, they always skip because there, you know, there, there is no um, economic feasibility for, for any big artists to come and and visit. Mm. You know. Um, and is is it, is there a local business? Are there record labels? Are there publishers? No, I mean before before going to that, I just said like we don't we don't just provide the the, the PR, the huge PR for for Pristina and Kosovo. Uh, in 2019, our research said that, that we brought, as a festival, to the municipality of Pristina, we brought, brought six to eight million, you know, in, in one week. Yeah. Which I don't think that any business in, in, in Pristina brings that kind of amount of, of income for the local businesses, mm. you know, so indirectly for the, 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 the hotels, whole, restaurants, you know, hotels, yeah. restaurants, yeah. markets. You name it, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, you know, so we bring like six to eight million in one week to municipality of Pristina. So basically, you know, apart from doing the PR, which is very important, which is my aim, like solely it's my aim. And then hopefully we're going to have like, you know, with this site, with the new site, I think that in five years time, we are going to have 70,000 daily visitors, you know, in Pristina that will bring us to, to 300,000 easily in next five years, mm -hmm. you know, visiting Pristina for the festival. So having that, it's going to be like a crazy number of, of you know, we, we, we're going to need like shitloads of hotels. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. just to end on that then, because I think, well, I'll ask anybody if they have any questions in a minute, but just to end on that. So that's your ambition for the festivals to get up to that kind of 70,000 mark. What about the amb ambitions for the foundation? What are you hoping it's going to be doing in five years' time? Foundation, we have an uh, um, MOU signed in 1st of August 2019 with a, with a mayor uh, in, in Pristina. Uh, and we are still waiting for that MOU to, 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 to see the light of day. Hopefully, we are going to, to uh, restart that negotiation. He'll uh, be at your door on Tuesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, I, I have always tried to, 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 to explain um, to everyone Im involved in there, you know, uh, we are probably one foundation in Kosovo that is not asking for money. Mm -hmm. You know, if we are going to ask for grants, we are going to ask for grants from Roskilde. Yeah. You know. We're not going to ask for, for, for grants. We are going to ask for support, governmental and local support for the festival, of course, because you have the neighboring festivals in, you know, in Serbia and, 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 and in, in, 
in uh, Croatia, for example, uh, just a quick kind of stat, um, Exit Festival receives six million, six, six million euros a year to do the festival in, in, in Serbia. Why? Because it's the only positive news that comes out of them. Yeah. That's it. People say, oh, I'm going to Exit Festival, oh, I'm having fun, thank you, Serbia, it's, it's great. Fantastic, great, great for them. Mm. You know, but everything else is negative. You know, so the only sh bright kind of news that comes out of that country is that. So they recognize that and they invest six million so they can bring like the big names. Mm -hmm. The other one is Ultra in, in, in Split. They get five million euros, two million from the government, three million from European Union by government lobbying to the European Union. So they do not do the, their lobbying. The government does, you know, the grants for them. So, of course, we are going to look for, for, you know, because we are, you know, we are going to surpass these, these, these festivals in, in, in very, very near future. Yeah. You know, 2023, we are going to have at least 50,000 people. I mean, I guarantee that. So, you know, of course, we are going to uh, ask for that. But as the foundation goes, we organize a festival while doing all these things, promotion, you know, bringing revenue to, to, to the community, uh, creating a, a big park, you know, for, for, for the community. As a and, and then we give everything to the foundation in order to create this hub for artists, for new artists um, uh, in, in Kosovo and Pristina, uh, you know, predominantly. So we have this, this place that we are waiting to sign it you know, in the near future. And uh, the money is there for, for, to create, we are creating uh, three um, rehearsal studios that we are missing in, for, for, for our youth. We're creating two demo recording studios, so we don't wanna compete with, with, with the producers and the, the, the recording studios. We don't want to say like, okay, now people are gonna come in here and then record for free because of their livelihood, mm -hmm. they are going to do that, of course, but as a demo recording, they can record demo, demos in there, and then they can go to the, 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 the producers in Pristina and Kosovo, wherever they want, saying, like, okay, we made this, how about, you know, to... So I think that that is going to... That's, that leads to the answer about the recording mm. uh, and the publishing houses. I think when we create that kind of energy that used to be once in the garages and the, the you know, that I mentioned. Yeah. When we have that, that, that kind of energy again in Pristina, you know, then uh, publishers will come to, to, to play. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the record labels will come to play. You know, and they will say like, okay, you know, I, I really like this. And we have, you know, if we get combined numbers, then we have about, you know, five, five million people, you know, listening to this kind of music, to this language. So it's not, it's not nothing, you know. They, I know artists that are very successful when they reach one million listeners. Yeah, you know. I'm surprised. Well, it's not my band, but yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't know. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we have, like, for example, hip hop scene is very good. It's it's ex you know excellent, but I would love to see the 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 guitar bands. I would love to see, you know, new electronic. Mm. kind of scene that is, that is really, really nice in, in, in Pristina and Kosovo. I would like to see them sit in and then, you know, talking with, with uh, you know, record labels and... Okay. Thank you so much for, for, for being here. He'll see you on Thank Tuesday. You. <laughs> yeah, 11 o'clock. Thank you very much, Mr. Rama. Thank you. I'm, I'm surprised there's not r record labels and publishers here already, given the amount of talent that's come from Kosovan roots there must still be and the, the young population here there must be a lot of talent here so I'm there's, surprised they're not here already there's a there's a lot to be talked about the the, the record labels and the you know first uh, the author's right is mm -hmm. not regulated okay uh, in 2000 and I think it was 18 or 17 something like that, they started to do something with author's rights through the Ministry of Culture. 
the, the, the conference was held in, in Sarajevo, in, in, in Bosnia. None of them could, could travel to okay. go there. Yeah. So I've been asked from my friend Florent, who was the head of APIC Association of Performance and, and, and Interpreters uh, Collective, uh, would I go and represent Kosovo at, uh, at the, the, the author's rights? Mm. So I have nothing to do with that. So I was just doing them a favor, saying, like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll go. So from 2017 until now, there's, there has been no movement. And we need to, to sit down with, I mean, whoever deals in, in, in music industry in, in, in Kosovo, like on a daily basis, I know that there are com companies and agencies that do monetize from, from YouTube and this and that and the other, mm -hmm. but they kind of missing the point of how the music industry really works. Yeah. So, first and foremost, the APIC as a society or association of performers and interpreters, you know, it needs to work properly. It needs to be to have members. The artists need to understand that without the TVs and radios, you know, being part of, of the legislation and starting to pay the artists, mm -hmm. you know, for, for, for the radio transmissions, for the TV performances, for, for the TV um, appearances, you know, there is, the music industry is not going to survive and it does not survive. The, the other reason is that, you know, the musicians themselves, they have to understand that, uh, you know, if you are part of the society and if you are as a registered uh, artist and your uh, intellectual property is, is, uh, uh, is um, uh, registered within the, the society and that society represents you to the media, you know, 70 years after the artist dies, mm -hmm. their family is going to get the royalties. You know, it's, it's, I just don't understand how the musicians from, you know, it doesn't matter the genre, uh, how do they not get together? I said this to, to them, like, you know, you just have to be strong for one year. And you say, like, to all the radio stations, all the TV stations, you know, it, this is like really bad for, for, for Kosovo, I understand, you know, but you have to be strong and say, okay, if you don't pay me the royalties, because this is my intellectual property, I, I, I sit down for days on end, you know, in the studio and create the song that you like, that you promote, that you put, the, put it on the radio station. That pays their based wages. On, based on, exactly, based on that, you attract advertisers, yeah. you know, why wouldn't you pay me? You know, it's not right. It's, so, it's also, it's also then, something as a stepping stone to get an EU membership as well, because you'll need that to get EU course, membership. Of course, you need all the EU regulations, you know, pro and, but EU regulations aside, this is like directly, the, this um, hampers hmm. the, 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 the music society. If you have like publishers, then, then, as a publisher, you would go and find a new artist. You would find a new, new big thing. Yeah. You know, as a, as a promoter, you would find a new big thing. As a, you know, because it makes sense, there is a circular economy in There's that. an industry, yeah. Of course. So without, without artists being, you know, good to themselves, I, don't, I, I, I see it very hard for, for the music industry to start really taking some sort of a shape. I mentioned I, I, I did the, 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 my first song with 16 years old. I used to get royalties. Yeah. Do you know? So that kind of system existed before. Now exists in, uh, in for example, in Slovenia is like in par with, with Germany. I'm part of I, IFPI. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I hold the rights of uh, Warner Music for, for Kosovo and Albania. And, but I, I, I never went to, to, you know, because it's, Without the, the rest of the artists, I don't want to impose any kind of, you know, yeah. stoppages to, to, to the radio stations and TVs. Anyway, uh, without artists themselves being able to, to get together and say, like, okay, we need to create this music industry that we are already part in, part of, um, you know, I don't think that it's going to go anywhere. No. So it's going to be like the likes of Kushtrim, who, is going, who wants to, to promote the... the, the uh, music industry in Kosovo, he will go, you know, he will, he would need to go and then get every kind of, you know, uh, support from, from sponsors and this and that, and, you know, 
for people to come in to see like some sort of a music scene. Yeah. But in true honesty, we do not have a music scene. Um, Kustrom, do we have time for any questions? Yeah. We do. Five minutes. Okay. <laughs> Are there any questions for Doogie? Here we go. There's a mic, mic coming to you. Uh, Doogie, thank you for everything that you do, not only for a lot of people, um, you and your family, but, but thank just you. all around the world for uh, all the causes you guys support. Uh, two quick questions. One, uh, do you know where the location that you guys are building in for the uh, festival here? Sorry? Do you know the location that you guys are building? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course I do. Is, is that something you want to There's a new site. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's um, well, I don't know exactly, because it doesn't have a, a, a name or, or a street, but I can explain it to you where it is. When you, when you go to, towards Mitrovica, mm -hmm. um, uh, when you reach the, the, the roundabout of um, yeah. Turbe, Sultan Murati Turbe, mm -hmm. on the other side, the opposite, opposite side, nice. it's like, it's there. Cool. Um, other quick question was, have you considered um, doing a festival on the east coast of the United States for the diaspora that's there as well as for other people? I have, I have just came back from New York and had this conversation with some, with some people. And, um, you know, I, as, as much as I like to, to, to do it, I think that we need to be very careful on what, what we do. Uh, if I can draw a parallel on, on your question, for example, there is some, you know, a festival that is being organized in Switzerland, for example. Um, and it's made by, by Albanian artists from here and then, you know, they go to Switzerland and, and, and play. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't think that that's, that's what we want to do. We want to get international artists, big artists, play together with our artists mm -hmm. and rub shoulders and exchange information and exchange experiences and, you know, and show, for example, if we do uh, you know, a Sunny Hill Festival East, called East Coast Edition, then we are probably, you know, the, the, the main thing is going to be to have like this big, big US name, you know, to, to, to headline and then the rest of the guys and then, you know, everybody is going to be there to, to, to get to know each other. Our duty is to get people together rather than just cater for one, you know, community. Because in Switzerland, for example, uh, it's, it, it's seen, that, that thing is being seen as an alien thing mm -hmm. to the, the, within Switzerland. It's not like, what the hell is going on here? You know, we dance volley, we dance this, we do, you know, it's, it's, it's all good, don't get me wrong, but, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's more than that. We need to promote our inclusivity. We need to promote our people. We need to promote our, our, our you know, other, other sides than just, okay, we can, you know, have a, have a, have a festival. Dougie's, Dougie's research into finding a Kosovan ancestor of Jay-Z is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Oh, hi, right. there's one right at the front. Be brief. Doogie Gordon, it's an honor and a pleasure, really. And thank you for. Uh, yeah. Can't thank. Uh, I think nobody can thank you enough and do enough for, for, for having Kosovo, like literally. You know, so with the uh, Sun Hill and everything, it's. <laughs> civil plan. It, is a, it is a long headline now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. bit, so, uh, like you said, because they that festival in Switzerland where they dance and. Uh, but it's not. It's not, uh, in my view, it's not putting uh, the real talent of Kosovo and Albania, or whatever, like singers, proper singers, like how Dua made it up. So what do you think are the alternatives for singers, mostly singers, to show themselves like literally singing and, and, and showing their true artistry uh, apart from having a laptop doing a song and putting a music video on it that is the only one you see at the moment in kosovo and albania get the money do a video and wow while are you there what are something that's more authentic more that, that shows you're an actual proper singer and how can we uh, push that forward so now you have the platform anything you put out there a roadmap people are going to follow so people are going to look at you now and 
the success, the successes of Action Brothers and all these Albanians, how can you guys get together and make a, like an actual proper plan, nationwide plan, to put things up, like an X Factor or something, you know? That's it. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Um, I think, I think it's, it's, it's a matter of, of what we talked like a couple of, couple of minutes ago. Uh, in order for, for the real talent, the quality, to go, you know, to take their place, you need the association. When radio stations, when TV stations start paying for what they play in their radio, they will play something that will bring them more advertising, more advertising money. So if my song is shit, they're not going to play it. I can make 100 songs, they're not good, they're not going to play it. You're going to make one song, it's going to go on and on and on and on all day. Basically, you know, it's kind of, it's going to filter, you know, the, 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 the quality on, on, the, on the, you know, on the, on the range of music, whatever that may be. Um, do, you have a mu do you have a music export office at all? Sorry? Is there any such thing as a music export office in Kosovo? No. So that, that's, that's without, without the association, Gordon, it, nothing can work. But Who in, do you represent as, a, as, a, as an office? Like, in, you don't... There's a question here in a minute, but in, in other countries, the, it's sometimes a lot of the promoters get together. And Did we used to get one them. drink or two? <laughs> and they'll, um, they'll set up a music export office and it'll be people from, you know, it'll be people who are singers who'll decide who will maybe send to Eurosonic or anything like that. I think that's yeah. Daniel about to ask something. Yeah. No, it's not, sorry. <laughs> Is it? I think we should make this the last question, otherwise we're going to be here for the whole <laughs> all right, afternoon. All right, sorry. Uh, no, we are here until they kick us out, man. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you for a really good conversation. Uh, and I was just thinking, the getting the association, getting the collecting society up and running, shouldn't uh, wouldn't it be possible to to simply have first the collecting society invited in, and then have the collecting society start sending out invoices? Uh, and to, to collaborate with, I'm, I'm sure there are so, I, you know, I'm deputy chair of the Norwegian Neighboring Art Society, and I'm sure there are so many European collecting societies who would love to partner with a Kosovoan, uh, you know, sister organization and to start setting it up. And I think there's, there are two things that are important. One is the, the money, uh, the revenues, but the other one is to have music registered in Kosovo. So it means that you have talent that creates music and it's registered from in, in Kosovo, which means a lot. Yeah, I totally agree. Thank you. I mean, uh, I totally agree that, that um, you know, without the registration of the artist, without, without having uh, um, uh, a proper, proper uh, roadmap towards the music industry, how music industry operates, how it works, uh, it's going to be very hard for these artists to come up, you know, in, in, in in a, in a level that, that I think that some of them, they really deserve. Um, for example, I really like the hip hop um, uh, scene in, 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 in Pristina, uh, you know, especially, because the, the language, the, the slang that we use, it's, it reminds me a lot of a, a French rap, which is like really, you know, if apart from English language, you know, French and Albanian are my two favorite you know, languages to rap in. It's, it's I, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm a bit subjective, but um, without regulations, I don't think that we are going to do, be able to do anything. You know, as a collective uh, society, um, you need to have the, the members society first, the association. And the association is fighting with the government for so many years to get the legislation going. There is, as far as I know, I'm not 100% Sure, so, so then don't take my word for it. Um, as far as I know, there is something going on in there. Uh, you know, a friend of mine who was a, a, a president of APIC for seven years and he brought it up to here, he finally gave up. He said like, man, I can't, I can't fucking do it anymore. You know, if you cannot get the artists to go in there and knock on their door saying like, mate, how can you do this? You know, how, how do we become just, you know, like a neighboring country? You don't want to, I don't think that we, we can become PRS, 
we cannot become, you know, you know, collective agencies like, like they are in the Western world, but we have some sort of a start. And I'm not saying that these artists are going to be paid like an enormous amount of money immediately, you know, by, by, by the, 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 the radio stations and the TV stations, you know, and the, and the portals and whatever, because they are not going to have enough funds from the radio stations and TV stations, you know, to put on the associations thing. But at the same time, you will have monitoring. You will have, you know, filtering of the artists, who's being played, who's not being played. So going back to Ron's questions, you know, people are making one, one song, 2,000 euros, make a song, make a video, put it on, on there, million likes in 24 hours, thank you so much, you know, it doesn't happen. Anyway, that's a different story. You know, I think they're, they're, they're blowing their own horn. You know, they're trying, I don't know, is it, is it to, 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 to get a boyfriend, girlfriend, like, hey, I'm a, I'm a famous artist? I don't know. But it's, you know, you have like artists with shit song with, with, with one million song, one million likes and that. So it's, it's stupid. I mean, everybody knows that that's, that's not right. Um, I have a motto in, in, in pretty much everything that, 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 that we do. I usually say, like, people vote with their feet, with, which translates in so many things, you know. You do well, you do good things, you do right things. People will come, people will like it, people will, you know, be with you. You do a shit thing, nobody's going to come. So, basically, it, it boils down to that. We need an association, we need a, a, a legislation, we need the, the, the media, for example. Media, all media owners are millionaires. All of them. Not one, you know, that, that is not. Yet, yet again, they refuse to pay, you know, for, for the, the, the intellectual property that they create the content with. Without these guys, the content is dead. You've got nothing. When the Kosovo, Kosovo and Albanian people are going to get together and say, okay, you cannot play my music you know, on TV or radio without paying me, you know, or I'm going to take you to court, simple as that. You know, then the quality is going to be there, the payments are going to be there. The, you know, if we are just going to need to become part of the the normal music industry. That's it. I don't know, did I, did I completely derail from, from your answer, but yeah. So Thank I think, you. I think I got about a third of the way through my questions, so I think we should have part two next year. But um, <laughs> thank, thank you all for, for coming today. Can you thank Dougie for everything that he does? Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank and you, everyone. If anyone was a, a little bit... Um, hesitant can or I, shy about just, asking questions he's been you'll be hanging around for a few minutes won't yeah, yeah yeah can i just say like like while 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 we are here um i think that that we need to stick together whoever works on the music industry you know we need to help each other we need to to um consult each other we need to to be you know because this is a unique opportunity that we are sharing right now you know, as I feel, you know, we have this kind of renaissance of, of, you know, music and then in general, the, the youth of, of Pristina and Kosovo, you know, they are experiencing something new. I can see Rob there. He's like a great promoter and he does like amazing job in, in uh, you know, with, with electronic festivals and then, you know, in, in Albania. And we congratulate him for doing such a great, great, great job in there. So, you know, we need to consult him. We need to... to, to talk to people, we need to stay together, we need to support each other, so thank you for inviting us and I will be very happy to do it every year. Thank you. And stick around for Daniel, because he can tell you more about royalties and stuff.